many different ways most people can go, but you've got to get them to see that vision of their business so that you can then create the brand on top of it. Because okay. if they don't start seeing themselves as a set, their business as a separate identity, especially if they're branding themselves, they get lost in their, their emotions, not their customers' emotions, which is what they've got to connect with. So it sounds to me like the brand, from your perspective, is largely driven by the who. It's, it's like a, probably the biggest part of your brand is who are you helping? You are best equipped to help those who are just like you were. <laughs> it's like pick the you 10 years ago and that's your ideal customer. And that could be basically your brand. Brand, books, artificial intelligence, chat GPT. Holy crap, lots is gonna be discussed in this episode of the Onyx and All Show. Welcome. Listen, um, my brand has saved me in some very, very dire situations. And so I'm a big believer of the need to build a brand. I don't care if you own a laundromat down the street or if you own a e-commerce store selling trinkets, brand is important. And I think today more than ever before. So in my entrepreneurial journey now, I'm over 20 years in, I believe more today in branding and brand than I did 10 years ago. And I am so glad that I invested in building my brand all this time, even though none of my friends were. Direct marketers don't typically build a brand. We're all about dollar in, $2 out, dollar in, $2 out. I always kind of took a minute to build my brand. And I'll tell you that I've been in some murky waters and my brand pulls me out of it. My brand and my name and the recognition pulls me out of it. Today, we have with us a branding expert, but it's a little bit more unique and fun than that. So she has been teaching and guiding businesses and her specialty and expertise is to help businesses build a brand. Now, it also happens to be, she's actually a coach in one of our communities at Learn, which is awesome. And I wanted to bring her on today because something she's doing caught my attention. I'm a little bit of a skeptic, and she's one of the first ones to smack me upside the head and remove the skepticism from me. And that is chat GPT, or at a more macro level, artificial intelligence doing writing. I'm a copywriter, and I think it's a skill that I've honed over 20 years, and so even someone trying to tell me that there's AI that can do it is just upsetting, so I reject the idea but I've been playing with it. I'm coming around. It's some pretty powerful stuff. I've actually been using it on my social media posts. Y'all don't even know, and you're liking it and sharing it and commenting and it's working. But then our guest today, Tina, she goes and starts writing books with it. Yes, entire books. So we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about the process of building your brand. Now, if you're like, I don't have a brand, awesome. We're gonna find your brand in this episode. But then we're gonna talk about how to propel that brand using artificial intelligence. How cool is that? So help me welcome to today's episode, Tina Fletcher. Tina, how are you? Thank you for your time and thank you for being here. Hi, I'm good, thank you. Very good. So Tina, let's right, dive right in. Um, there are so many people that would argue, why is a brand important? Why, why, why does someone care? If I'm an e-commerce store, or if I'm something else, I'm selling trinkets or whatever, like why do I need a brand? Because it takes so many touch points these days for people to recognize your business. If you haven't branded yourself, those touch points might not be recognized. They just see a shirt. They don't see, especially like if you're using the example of e-commerce, they just see a shirt. But if you've branded that post with your branding, they see your shirt. And that's really why it's so important to be branded. Mm. And so, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because I, I typically buy brands. There's brands I like and I buy their t-shirts. So there you go. Prime example in e-commerce. A lot of people listening to this are coaches, they're course sellers. I think it kind of makes sense to why brand. Now talk, talk to me about how you fell into this. Like how did you become Tina, the expert on brands? What's your background? How did you get into it? And then I want to kind of talk about the process that you use to develop, to, to develop brands. Well, I started back way before even you started. I was a graphic designer back before there was computers. So I've been doing this a long time. Um, and then I moved into web design because it just seemed to be the natural progression. But one thing that always frustrated me is when somebody comes to me and go, build me a website, you know, do my, even my logo, whatever. And they hadn't actually defined their brand. So they didn't know who they were as a business. It's really hard to write copy. It's really hard to write things about a business when they don't even know who their target audience is. And then they haven't even done any brand visuals. 
So um, that's where I sort of started getting into the realizing how important branding was because as a web designer, a graphic designer, it's sort of like where it's got to start. And if people would learn to build from that foundation, they could have such better um, content out on, online these days or even offline. Wow. Oh, okay. So I guess I have so many places we could go, right? And so you, you start off as a graphic designer, then you moved into helping brands. What, what's your ideal customer? Like what's the type of person that you typically work with uh, for a brand? I'm, I'm, I'm pivoting now to a different way because I noticed that there's so many people with COVID, so many people have come online and they all want to have a business online and they're all putting out so much content and they're doing TikTok and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're doing this. And they're the people that I would like to help. I really believe that there's so many great businesses out there that, you know, how many TikTok videos can you do where you're not really branded? Um, mm. And they wonder why they're working so hard instead mm. of connecting with their audience because they didn't actually know their audience. Oh, I can, I can help everybody. I don't know how many. If I got paid every time somebody told me that, <laughs> you can imagine how much money I'd have now. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, seriously. Yeah. Okay, so walk me, so walk me through the process. We've got listeners right now, some that are existing entrepreneurs that are doing something, some that are just dreaming and looking to become an entrepreneur. Um, I'll tell you, I heard this one message. It was really, really big for me, and I'm talking. I heard this message like six, six months ago, four or five months ago. So I was, you know, obviously a very successful entrepreneur already, and still, and the message was by Rory Vaden on Ed Milet's podcast, and it was just, you know, pick the word. What is the word? The one word. It can't be two words, three words. It's one word. What word do you own? And I'm like, wow. Um, I haven't really thought about that. But that's like that word then defines your brand. It starts to define how you show up, who you show up for, where that, where those people are. And for me, it was scale, right? And to get more specific, it's to teach information marketers, who I call experts, how to scale. And that has truly, it's amazing. It's amazing, Tina, how that's changed my decision-making. Like right now, there's a big discussion going on about my Onyx and Gaul's expansion into India, right? And like really taking the India market seriously. And we were having a conversation the other day. It was like, okay, well, am I going to be Onyx the ins motivator, the entrepreneurial motivator, the guy who gets on stage and motivates people, um, and everyone's my audience, right? All of India, I want to inspire. Um, or am I going to be the guy in, that goes to India and teaches people how to scale their expert business? And it was so funny because a part of you is like, ah, but if I do that, my market drops from 1.2 billion people to 1 million or to 2 million. And But I'm like, yeah, but then you get to own that one or two million. Like those are your people like that. So, you know, you, you do, you announce an event and they frolic to it because they know it's their event. Anyways, it's, I think people think brand and they think something very different. I think brand and I think it, it defines your decision-making matrix and it helps in so many other ways and we never learn about this. So walk us through the process. Someone is listening right now who has no clue what their brand is how do you help them figure it out? Yeah, because I agree. Most people think of the brand and all they think of is the pretty colors and, you yes. know, the image. But that's like the icing on the cake. You know, till you've got a cake, you can't put that icing on. So yeah. when, you're, um, when you're sort of building out your brand, the first thing is you're looking at is who is your audience? And you're being really specific about this. And this is the one that really a lot of people really, as you said, you've you've got to close down your niche you don't have to niche too far and does that mean that if somebody from that's not in your niche comes to work, work with you it doesn't mean you can't work with them it just means that your marketing is con connecting with one lot of audience so we start off with finding out who our audience is but then the, what's most important is finding out who you are as a business and especially a lot of coaches and consultants struggle with this one because most of them especially like if you know, look at yourself you've got so many skills who do you become and who do you become to who? So that's where we, we, we look at their audience and then we go back and we look at their um, themselves and we define who they are as a person. We may change this three or four times as we go through the process and look at what their offers are, you know, um, where they want to connect with their people and all the rest of it before we get to the visuals. But that's the biggest thing is knowing what your business is. Like I've worked with coaches 
and they'll start on one program and then they'll think of 16 other programs and they want to go and build them all out. Build the one that's you first, then build out anything else. You know, you look at yourself, you started in one niche. You look at Tony Robbins. He didn't start off doing 13,000 different things. He can now, but he started with one thing mm. and that's what you've got to do. Um, and it's not, it's not real kind of sexy. It's kind of boring and everybody's really disappointed when I tell them that. They want to do something yeah. wow, but unfortunately that's where you've got to start. It's on everything. You know, you do your foundation work. All right. So let's, let, let me pick an example. Let's go through it because it's fascinating. The one thing that I don't know why that just, why 20 years of being an entrepreneur, that was such a big epiphany for me. Um, but it's like the one thing, like, what do you own? What's your, what's your thing? Um, so I'm going to just pick a random avatar for you and let's kind of go through a little bit. Um, Actually, I won't make it random. I'll make it someone who's like me because I understand that person, but just not an entrepreneur. So I'm 39. So we'll pick a 42 year old, two kids, professional job, white collar, drives 45 minutes a day to work each way, uh, does well, you know, not necessarily well, upper middle class, um, but looking to, you know, branch out, maybe open a consulting company, do something on the side. They come to you. What, what, where, how, what do you start asking them? What are the types of things you ask them? And Daniel, all, all of you who are listening, I want you to start asking yourself these questions and answering them. Okay. First thing I'm asking them is it sounds, um, I'll ask them why. Why are they now going, if they're comfortable where they are, what's making them uncomfortable that they want to go and do something else? Because if it's a financial thing, that may be different to if it's a, you know, a life, something happened in their life that's making them want to pivot, you know, a, a traumatic experience or whatever. So I usually start with that. And then I'll go into, and as I said, we'll talk about who they want to connect with, who is their audience, and then we'll come back and look at what they want to give that audience. Because I used to start on what you want to give me, and then I'd go on the audience, and that's where we would go, oh, but I can help everybody do this and all the rest of it. Um, so I found that if we find who they wanted to help, we could then make a better offer for them and we could create um, a better system underneath. From there, after we've worked out what they've got to offer, we then have a look at it in a way that how do they connect? Now, you, they could be this person that you've got. Their expertise could be that they are, okay, let's do something random. Maybe they've been working in corporate America and they're very good as a people person and maybe they are very good at organising things for everybody. So that's what they want to do is they want to go and help people organise. So then you say, well, what do they want to organise? Is it a business? Is it um, where are you helping them? So it's a little bit, it's kind of a bit, I suppose, esoterical at this stage because there's so many different ways most people can go, but you've got mm -hmm. to get them to see that vision of their business so that you can then create the brand on top of it. Because okay. if they don't start seeing themselves as a set, their business as a separate identity, especially if they're branding themselves, they get lost in their, their emotions, not their customers' emotions, which is what they've got to connect with. So it sounds to me like the brand from your perspective is largely driven by the who. It's, it's like a, probably the biggest part of your brand is who are you helping? Right. And, and, um, Again, you know, the, the the lessons I've learned and things I've heard in the past is you are best equipped to help those who are just like you were. <laughs> it's like yeah. pick the you 10 years ago and that's your ideal customer. And that could be yeah. basically your brand. So it's exactly what I did, right? So my brand is to help information marketers scale. That's, I struggled with that 10 years ago, five years ago. There is no methodologies or training or systems out there to to take a business from seven to eight figures. There's quite a few for zero to six, some for six to seven, just none for seven to eight. And, um, and I am, and so I can be in a room and have a conversation with people. And I've had people literally tell me, they're like, it, it's like, you've known me my whole life. Like, how are you reciting all of these things? It's because I was you, I know you. Um, so is that a big part for you? Do you kind of go through that exercise and help define the avatar of who they're going to help? Yes. And it is, as you're right, most times it is who they were. Um, sometimes it's also who they, it may not be who they were. It might be who somebody, if they've had somebody that's had something happen to them in their life and they could help them, they want to help that person. And they're the ones that find it really hard because 
they can't relate, but they want to help, you know, like if they've had something traumatic happen or something, an experience. So it's sometimes a little bit harder then, but it's not impossible. We just have to really define it before they move forward and look at it realistically. Look, you know, are you going to be able to help as much as you want or is this too emotional? Should we just pivot a little bit this way and then you can help more people? Got it. So for everyone who's watching, brands not necessarily colors, logos, you know, your catchy statement. It's first the who, the what, the why. Why are you doing this? What are you offering and who are you doing it for? Once you have that, that actually kind of helps you determine the rest of it. So, and it's actually really true because Tina, I came up with the name Expert Summit, which has become quite the brand in the short time that it has been. Um, it's already becoming something that people are talking about for two reasons. One, um, I'm targeting people that are already doing six, seven figures a year and they like to be, they, they resonate with the word expert. They are an expert at something. That word means something to them. Versus if I'm going to go out and teach those who are just getting started, it's the exact opposite. The word expert scares the crap out of them because they don't believe they're an expert in anything, right? So that word was super, super selective. And then the second word being summit was also because successful entrepreneurs love going to events. They don't like seminars and we're a little burned out on conventions, summits and masterminds we love going to because they're a little bit different. And so like I literally that name came because it's like that target demographic is going to like that name. It's going to mean something to them. Um, I was in a meeting yesterday where one of our mastermind members who bought into my mastermind called Board of Experts, she literally told me, I was so shocked. She said, the name of your program alone was one of the main reasons I bought it. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? She goes, well, I don't want to be a student. I don't want to buy a mastermind where I'm a student. I want to be a mastermind where I'm a peer. And she's like, and yours is called Board of Experts. Everybody in here is an expert. And I'm like, crap, this stuff works. Like you, you, but, but see, I knew to do all of this because I basically said, well, I'm my own target customer, right? What do I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to buy a mastermind called cash now ready blueprint. Like that's not what I'm going to buy. It's not like, it's just, I'm going to buy something more professional sounding. And then, and then the colors and the logos and everything come, kind of follows from that. So I want everyone to, to, to really think about this today. Uh, you, you, you kept it simple and I want to keep it at that. Why are you doing it? What do you have to offer and how do you connect with them? Um, and it's just like, and I guess w what we would add is the fourth one would just be, who are you doing it for? Um, which might be the you 10 years ago. Um, and then once you have all of that, start to pull those words, um, that, that makes sense. Uh, if you ever come to an expert summit and you walk around the venue, we have banners and things up that say the word scale, <laughs> it's, it's everywhere. Right. And it's for a reason because that's what we're about. And I want, I want to get to a point where if anyone ever sees the two words expert scale, like to, in the same vicinity, they think Onik. like that's, that's been kind of the mission I'm working towards. Um, Really cool stuff. So, so I guess, Tina, then talk to me about how, because we're, you know, the way you and I connected first to, to even do this episode was on like the cool work you're doing with AI. And so how, so here you are branding expert for so many years, you're teaching people to kind of develop their brands. Um, sounds like personal brands is kind of your specialty. Is that right? Like really helping people with their personal yes. brand? Yeah. Um, how do you go from that into you and I talking about AI? There's, I know it's a huge gaping time there but like walk me through that well actually i'm gonna i'm gonna admit to something now and you're probably gonna go oh don't do admit to that but you know how you put it up in the chat saying hey has anybody done this i hadn't yeah. done it but i said i did and i did it after i told you i did it oh snap <laughs> <laughs> all right okay well you said can well, we do this and i went okay so i sat there and did it well, okay. and I went, yes so i can on. do this hold on we gotta unpack that because there's a there's a huge lesson here all right act as if okay wait so i'm not upset that's cool i as long as you know what to do and by the way i guys i asked her to show me something and she actually sent me a book that was ai written and i'm like damn this is good I, you know this is impressive so tina why did you do that though what was the underlying goal so i posted that you could have easily just skimmed past it and said nothing but you went out of your way to say but i'm going to do this was there were you trying to was there something you were trying to do what's the end game here what you just wrote me into i was looking for a challenge i love okay. doing my branding 
but I felt like that I needed something more of a challenge to add to the branding so that I could give A to my my um my clients and all and students and everything. Yes, I use the word students. Um I wanted to be able to give them something else, but I didn't know what it was. And I've been looking for probably six months on something that I could give them that was a little bit different, a bit more cutting edge. I love tech. I it not frustrates me. I want people to love tech too. I think using tech to in to market your business is brilliant. And okay. so many people are scared of tech. Like when I used to teach to people how to build websites, my goal was for somebody to get a white screen of death before the end of the course. So that was the thing. Whoever could get it, they'd have $100. And nice. it took all the fear out of it because, you know, if they <laughs> totally wiped their um, website, I was going to give them money. So I think tech is, we're so lucky in this age that we have tech. I mean, you're not doing designs with Letraset and, and hand. You know, you've got computers and now we're moving on to AI. So you caught my attention with AI. I didn't know much about it other than the art side of it. So I went, oh, I need to look into this. And then I went, mm. I can do this. This is, makes sense. So that's why I answered you. So, so it really wasn't a big reason other than why not. Yeah, I like it. All right, so you went for a challenge. So for those of you who are out there making 38 excuses of why you can't do stuff, Tina just said, eh, I'll say. You know what? You, you, pulled a, uh, you pulled a Bill Gates on me. I always say, you pulled a Bill Gates. They're like, hey, we need a mouse. He's like, got it, done, no problem. Doesn't have a damn thing and, and then goes and gets it from Oracle. Um, or, hey, we need an operating system. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Didn't have anything and goes and codes it later. Yeah. Um, so... So, but you were very specific. So for, for the back story here, everybody's probably wondering, what are they talking about? I made a post on Facebook where I said, hey, um, looking for some AI expert to use AI. Because what we're doing is we're putting a town hall together for our board of experts mastermind. I want to bring some of the smartest people who use chat GPT, Jasper, and other automation tools to, to write and create marketing and copy and posts and social media and all that. Um, and we're putting a really cool two, three hour town hall together because I, I want to bring this to my mastermind. Um, and so I was looking for the experts that are doing it. So I made a post on Facebook just saying, who's the expert? Post went crazy, lots of comments. And we had a guy, uh, Joe Lawrence, who I'm excited to see what he's doing. He's, he's using it to write emails, to create image ads, and he's using it pretty much to beat his controls on Facebook ads. I find that fascinating. We have another person who's using it for SEO, who's actually using it for blogging and then creating affiliate commissions from that. Um, and then Tina, you came along and in that, and you're like, I use it to write books. And that was what caught my attention. You were the first person to say, I use it to write books. So why did you say that? Why were you so specific to say books? Because it was something I hadn't done. And in the time I saw your post to the time I answered it, I wrote an outline and I could see that I could definitely do it. So I decided that it was something that I hadn't done. And if you're going to try, if you're going to push yourself, you've got to push yourself and do something that's not comfortable. Did you write the outline or did the AI write the outline? Um, I put in the parameters so it could write the outline. Does huh? that count? Huh? Yeah, no, of course. No, that's brilliant. I was hoping you would say that. that and you were using chat GPT. Is that what you were using? Okay, so so that's fascinating. All right. Um, so basically, you're like, okay, this is doable. But do you have a particular love affair with books? Is that part of your branding? You know, when you're working with people on their personal brand. And right? I really feel like I've let people down by not doing it. Now that I've started doing it, mm. um, I always went. Oh, I mean, I wrote a book years and years ago, but that was about essential oils, so it was something totally different. But I never thought of it. I mean, you always hear, oh, a book can launch your business, blah, blah, blah. But I've not, I've always been, oh, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. And this was so good at getting me structured and getting me going. And then every time I got stuck, I could get some help. It was like having somebody, like a little, somebody there beside you helping you the whole way. It was awesome. Um, so, yeah, it was just something that was fun. and. Also very good for marketing. So, you know, win-win. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you said you wrote a book some years ago. D what did it do for you? I, I guess I'm really, I'm nothing. Okay. All right. Good. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, but I'm still intrigued. I feel like there's more there because you immediately jumped to writing a book. Um, and then you did write a book. Have you seen some uptick from that? Like, what are you seeing? So forget for a minute, we'll talk about the, the technical way of using this to write a book. 
just a disclaimer, guys, I'm a big believer. I've written so many books and I put quotes around them because I write what I call marketing books and then I write books called legacy books. Uh, marketing books, I have a whole automated way of doing it before all this automation tools. I just have a, it's, it's, an, it's a very, in, it's not a perfect way at all. It's a very like, let's get something of value out just so we can use it to get, you know, to get people in and give them something. My legacy books, I, I, you know, sweat bullets over. I try to write every word and I try to, you know, I do the whole process. Legacy books, I have circle of profit and I have escape. And then marketing books, I got like 10 of them, 12, 15. Some of them, Scott's honor, I've never read. My team wrote them. I trust them to, like, I know that it's a good book. Some of them I voice dictated. My team took that, turned it into a book. Um, so the value of books for me is, is massive. I, I, you know, I, I think it's been a big, big part of my brand. The other thing is my two legacy books, Circle of Profit, was uh, forward by Robert Kiyosaki. That initiated my relationship with Robert Kiyosaki, which went on to make tens of millions of dollars in revenue over the last so many years. My second legacy book was forwarded by Damon John, um, which started that business relationship, which has been amazing. So to be it, like the book has helped me have authority, has helped me break big doors to get like big deals, has helped me generate tons of revenue. Marketing books have helped me generate tons of leads and branded me. So I'm all there. I feel like there was something you were sensing subconsciously, which led you to, to, to going the book route. Why didn't you write more books? Let me, let me ask the question a different way. So this long, you've been a branding expert. Why didn't you look at books? Was it because they're hard to write? What, what was it? Uh, I think I kind of always felt like that. Um, I'm very much because I am always working on somebody else's brand and on somebody else's product that I tend to write, you know, and like even when you do copy, you write as that person. And I kind of felt that as me, I had nothing that was, worth saying so I kind of kept putting up thinking oh I, I'm sure I can come up with a better idea or a better idea on what I should be writing about so it was more a case of it wasn't fear it was more a case of it's not the right time yet so I think I was just putting it off till I thought I had something worth saying and then I realized well maybe I have something worth saying now so I did do you feel most of your clients do you feel they have something worth saying now yeah. Do you feel most of the people listening to this have something worth saying now that they should have a book about? So many people have something worth saying. And a lot of times they just can't get it out of their head, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think you might have even told me about it years ago um, about, you know, writing it out and, you know, you get your outline and the three hat system and all that. I think that was way yeah. back in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it made perfect sense, but I still couldn't do it. Well, it still worked. Um, it still works. Still works. Yeah. Right? Well, like, that's what I use to do this with the yeah. AI. I literally so, use the same system. Yeah. It's um, some some of my beliefs on this matter for everybody. I think uh, I I give this story. You're so if you're listening to this podcast, you're going to hear it again in a podcast that I did with um with Matt McWilliams. Whenever that comes out, so the story is this. It's it's my cousin. I always tell this story. So I I, I bought this house. Okay. This is like my. I made it house. I'm super excited. I'm like automating the house. It's a beautiful house, four stories. It's being interior decorated. It's a gorgeous house. I'm going to have a housewarming party. I can't wait for my cousins and my family to see it. This is me doing a little show off, all right? I'm like, hey guys, look, look at my house. Like I made it, you know, love me, need me, want me. And, um, and people come to the housewarming party and they're walking around the house. They like it, but not really getting, not really getting that satisfactory, like, wow. Right. Cause I mean, all of my family is very successful. They all have amazing houses. But my cousin walks into my office and in my office, one of one thing our interior decorator had done was she had framed the covers of three of my books and put them on the top of a shelf. It was pretty high. And my cousin's like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, it's the cover of my book framed. She's like, why's your name on it? I'm like, it's my book. She's like, you wrote a book? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, you're an author. I was like, uh, yeah, I'm not, it's not even published, it's self-published. She went berserk. She's calling everybody like, Kaya, come in here. This guy wrote a book. He's an author. And everyone's just freaking out. And I'm like, I'm looking at this. I'm like, this one impresses you? Like, geez, this was not hard to do. Like, look at my house. <laughs> like, you know, like what the hell is what's, what's going on with you guys? But I, I remember at that point, I, I was like, I've always said books can help you build authority. But man, I witnessed. And so here's the thing. My family 
especially my cousins, they've been watching me grow up for the, in the business for the last 20 years. They know I'm successful. They know I have partnerships with Damon John and Robert Kiyosaki and all these big people. So it's not like they don't know I'm successful. But knowing all of that, the thing that finally got them to lose their minds was the fact that my name was on a cover of a book that I wrote, designed, self-published, but it was still fascinating. So I don't know. I just want everyone to walk away with like, that's, that's, that's what could be like, people really put you in a place of authority and that alone can become the thing that gets you business, but it is a pain in the butt sometimes to write the book. And now you, Tina, have figured out how to shortchange that process. So walk me through it. So um, let's, let's pick a different avatar. Um, actually I'll pick a friend of mine and let's, let's write a book for her. I'll, I'll tell her to listen to this. Um, I have a friend of mine. She's a stay at home mom. She has two kids and I, and she has a degree in social services, a master's in it. She doesn't work though. And, uh, she told me we were talking recently and she was asking me about what I do. And she's, she was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't know what I would do in your world. I'm not an expert in anything. The thing is she's, amazing with her kids like amazing they they are she does so many things with them and she's like i'm sitting there saying I'm like you're like a great mom and i don't know you got like the whole mom thing really figured out i'm pretty sure there's something there and she's a military um like wife right so i'm starting in my head i'm like niching down and like all of that i guess let's so let's say i'm going to her and i'm like you should write a book about parenting boys or like or whatever i don't know Walk now. Let's maybe use that as an example, and let's like because it's the most obscure example. And from your experience, from your experience, can Chat GPT write a book for that? Yes. Wow. Okay. So walk but, me through it. Yeah, yeah, taking into the premises that when you you know it can give you enough of the book that she would then add into it her life experience to make it a good book. It's a great you know make it a great book. Correction. It'll be a good book without her story in it, as soon as she adds that in, but if she's got it all outlined and everything like that and she's got chapters written and all that, it's really easy to then put your story through the middle of that. So that's what's okay. so good about it. Like you could, you write your outline, you write your, um, from, and the outline is different to your chapters. You make up an outline first, then you go and define it into chapters and then the sub-chapters and then you, even the AI then, you take each of those sub-chapters and you put them in and you've put in a lot of um, prompts and then you are building it out. So things are prompt put in prompts is you put in who your audience is. So hold on one sec. So I, can I pause you real quick? So I want to start and yeah. go pretty step by step for this. So for anyone who wants to play with chat GPT, at least for now, it's free. I don't know by the time this episode comes out, if it still is, they're, they're kind of tinkering with the idea of launching a paid yeah, version. Yeah. So and even if it's paid whatever it's going to be cheap um you go to openai.com okay openai.com go to the very top of the page it says little letters chat gpt try me now it's in beta click the try me now it'll ask you to create a free account name email pop it in and then on the next side you get it's like a chat box it, it's like you opened up a, you're chatting with somebody and that's what we call a prompt so whatever you type into that chat chat so like if i was texting tina and i was like tina can you send me you know, a 300 word article about blah, blah, blah. I'm giving her a prompt. You're giving this chat GPT a prompt. So now here we are, we know the topic and we want to create an outline. That's what you said. Step number one was, so walk me through the prompt that you would give it to create this outline. This outline. Okay. For an outline, the prompt I would give it would be something for, okay, we'll go with the, the exact thing that you've just said. Let me just walk through what you said. You said, we're going to do it for um, somebody who's going to talk about children. So I might start with, I could start with a, well, let me think, which am I going to start yet? So I would say something like, write me a book outline that, ex and then I would say what my book's about. So I so said about my book that's for parents of children that are, that are boys age between these things. That's a really terrible way of saying it, but you know what I mean? My audience is obviously the parents, but also maybe grandparents. Okay. So you would just conversationally talk to it like that? Yes. And then I put in things like my tone. Make sure it's in a tone like I want it motivational, I want it confident, I want it funny, you know, I want 
sarcastic if you're that sort of person, whatever tone you can do it. You can also put in there, I want it written in the tone of, of some really, you know, um, well-known author and you can get it in a tone very similar to the way they write. So you can wow. do that as well. So you can tell it, I'm, I want a book about, I want an outline about this. Do you tell it like how many chapters you want, yada, yada, or just let it do its thing? I let it do its thing the first time because in my outline, that's all I want to do is get the ideas and the outlines. And then I okay. might go in and then in the chapters, I'd be more specific about I want six chapters or I want eight chapters and this is the sort of thing that I want in those chapters. And that's when I start getting specific then. And then I'll go even more specific after that. And each one of those chapters, I'd say I want sub chapters and you keep breaking it down like that. Got it. I actually okay. wrote a book about this. Because you told me to write a book about, it. I told you I was going to write a book. I did. I wrote the oh, book about it. You wrote okay. So you wrote a book about writing a book with uh, Chat GPT. That's amazing. Well, if you're willing to give it away, we'll put it in the show notes and we'll put a link to it um, in the in the YouTube episode. So, um, all right. So I come into this. I basically here's what I've experienced, and it sounds like that's what you're doing. I'm very conversational with it. So whenever I I've been not using it for books, I've been using it for like social media posts. So I'll go to it and I'll say write me a 200 word uh, Facebook post about um, the power of focus with a statistic in the post. Please write it in the tone of Onyx and Gall. And um, it will write something. And what people don't realize is that you can then probe what it wrote. So it writes something out and I'll say, can you please shorten that? Um, and it'll write something out and say, can you please make that more casual sounding? And it'll rewrite it. And then I'll say, can you please insert a statistic in it? And it'll do that. And so it's like, it, most people say you get the first output. They don't realize you can keep impacting the output by telling it what you want to do with it. And so that's what you're doing. You say, hey, I give it the macro output. This is what the book is about. This is who it's targeting. Write it in the tone of blah, blah, blah. Hit enter. And it pumps stuff out. And do you, now you're getting an outline, do you continue to massage the outline or the outline you take as is and you massage other things? It depends. If you know, it, sometimes I've just taken the outline and just okay. gone with it because it's exactly what I, it was sort of what I was looking. Sometimes I'll hit, you know, regenerate three or four times and then take the things out of three or four different versions. Um, okay. Because usually you know enough about the stuff, you know enough about the subject that you can go, okay, well, I like those three from there and the two from there and those three from there. There's my outline. Yeah, and I want to, I want I just really quickly because people may not know that you use a key term like regenerate. So guys, there's a little button when you get finished with the command and hit enter. There's a little button in the corner. It's like a little circle, and if you click it, it just reruns that command again. So well, they actually written the, written the word regenerate now to make it easier. Oh, perfect. Okay. So there you go. So it says regenerate. So it's just like, you may not like the first outline. You just hit it again and it kind of goes back and does it again. And maybe now it brings in some elements you do like. And then what Tina's basically saying is he hit regenerate three or four times. It'll give you like each time it'll give you an outline. You, you might like pieces and portions, and then you can piece yours together from that. Um, Okay, so now I've got my outline, let's just say. You've done it a few times. That that whole process could have taken us in exactly about six minutes, if not, you know, if yeah. not less. Yeah. And so you, now you have an outline. What's the next thing we do? Well, then now what you want to do is say you have an outline and you want that to be written to chapter headings. So you want, you'd say something like, you know, using this outline as a guide, you know, write me chapter headings three to five words because obviously you don't want chapter headings that are, you know, 20 words long. Um, and also you want some explanations maybe about the book. And once again, you might confirm who your audience is. I tend to put it in again, even though the AI remembers it some, most of the time, I confirm it again and your voice. And then you might say, make sure the flow of the book is correct and, um, and they're going to be learning something about this subject. So you're, you're telling the AI a little bit more information every time. So I find doing that. Um, and then I would say that I want the book structured in a certain way. So obviously, if you're doing a book on parenting, you would probably you might want it about, you know, um, bedtime. You would want to start off with the morning first and then lunchtime things and then things that happen at nighttime. So you say you want it structured, you know, to, to work in a daily, what happens through the day. So you can add things like that in. And then usually you find by putting all those prompts in, you get a pretty good chapter 
um, all your chapters. And I very rarely have to regenerate for those chapters if I've got to that stage. But that's just a heading. You're getting the titles of the yeah. chapters. Okay, so yeah. now I have kind of a table of contents. That's what it's Correct. Like. Outline to table of contents. And is that the terminology you use with chat GPT? You say chapter headings and it knows what that means? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you, I tried so you, title and I went weird. Okay. So you type in the outline because you pieced it together. You say, here's my outline. Please write me three to five word headings for each of the uh, part for each of the, the chapters. Okay, great. So it does that. Now what? What's next? Next, I would go and say, now take these chapters that I have and write me subheadings or subchapters for these chapter titles. And then I get my subheadings underneath. Hmm. So now I've got, you, you've, you've now probably got like five or six chapters if that's what you've sort of ended up with and you've probably got three to five subheadings underneath that. So that's where I go next. And, and, then, and, the, and the prompt there was subheadings. Is that what you used? So here are here are my chapters. Please give me three to five subheadings per chapter. Yes, and I'd say plus explanations for the chapter because that would make sure that I've got what the subheadings make sense for the chapter. Okay, um, got it. It just works for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. It seemed to work when I didn't put it in. I was getting kind of weirder. The subheadings didn't make sense to that chapter. They could have fitted in any chapter. They were a little bit too general. So by putting that in, it works. Um, it. Yep. And then I might put something like, you know, make sure it flows um, with the structure of working through the day or whatever it is for the enjoyment of my readers because we're, we're making sure that we're telling the prompts that we're still talking about a book here. Mm, okay. All right. So now we've got our sub outline. Like now this is like a full outline. This is a full thorough outline. What do we do next? Next, we go and we start writing our chapters. So you start with the introduction chapter and you give it the introduction chapter information and you say, write me an introduction chapter about this book with my audience in this tone and I want points on this in depth, but I also want the chapter to be the introduction and it's got to hook the reader and establish a sense of trust and rapport so they're engaged because that's what your introduction has to do. So wow. give it the okay. prompt to do something like that. Wow. Because okay. let's, let's face it, if you don't get, you don't cook them in the introduction, they're not going to read the rest of the book. Yeah. So that's it. So you're just going to do that same prompt for every chapter. Yeah. Well, no, in the next chapters, okay. I usually say um, this chapter comes after this chapter. And then it goes to the next one. Please ex make sure you keep you link the chapters so you've got those link linking. So do you leave? So okay. So let's say I wrote the introduction. I say write me an introduction chapter for this book targeting this audience and this voice, and it writes the chapter. So I leave it there, and then I say, now write me chapter one to this book, for which you just wrote the introduction above. Make sure to tie it in. And here are the bullet points that need to be covered in this chapter. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. yep. And then I might add something like add examples, facts, and scenarios in this chapter, along with a conclusion that bridges to the next chapter on and whatever the next chapter title I is. I didn't know we could do that level of prompting where you could tell it to tie things in and give me examples and then, hey, make sure you, you know, close it with an open loop for the next chapter. Like I did not. Oh, it that. makes a huge, I didn't do that the first couple of books. I'm learning yeah. this. I could even have some yeah. better things for you by we do the time we do the town hall. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. I mean, that, that really is amazing. Um, for marketing books, so as I was just defining the difference before, I was like marketing books and legacy books. For marketing books, this is a no-brainer. This is a done deal. This is how, yeah. this is how books should be written. If its only intent yeah. is to be used as a lead generator, um, this can be a powerful lead generator. And if nothing else, it creates seventy-five percent of the work, and then you can give the human the rest of the twenty-five, like you said, to insert stories, clean it up, smoothen it out, remove the robotic language if there's any. Um, Legacy books, I would still say, because my legacy books are so story driven. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure I'd be as comfortable, but your brand can be built off of my brand was built off of marketing books, not legacy books. My legacy books are successful because my marketing books did so well to build my brand that people then go buy my legacy books. So um, 
Okay, so, so you went through this route for each chapter, then you close it up, and now you got yourself... Well, I class that as my first draft. Okay, so yeah, so now you got yourself first draft. So where do we go from there? From the first draft, that's when I actually start bringing whatever I want in there. You know, if I've got, um, like I in my example book, I wrote a book on... Um, Meditate as sort of mindfulness and all that. So then I would bring in, you know, examples of art, my story and all that would come into that then if that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd also be reading, you'd just be reading through it, doing your normal revising of a book and all the rest of it and changing a few things up. That can be pretty quick. If you've decided that what you've got spot on and it's a marketing book, you might find that you don't do a huge amount of revising. Maybe all you're putting in there is some prompts about what your business is about or giving some examples or testimonials or something. It may not be that big. If you're writing something that um, you want to, you know, teach people something or it's a story, well, then that section may be a little bit bigger. Got it. So what about things like the title? Did you use, um, so the book that I saw that you sent me, did you use ChatGPT to create the title of it and like the subtitle and everything? Yeah. That's so crazy. All right. <laughs> Next question I have. So, so uh, fair enough. And I want to stop there and just say, I would get freaked out if you didn't, I, like if you said from draft one to draft two, I also used automation and AI, I would just get, it would just freak me out a little bit. Like I, I'm not there yet mentally. I still feel like I need a little human element to this thing. Like I'm in my Tesla, I'm not letting it drive itself. Like I know it can, and uh, it tells me it can. I'm like, ah, I'm good. Like I'm just going to drive. So I'm still like, you know, I'm, I'm not... Um, but I know that the time is coming and, and I'll be honest with you. One of the things I've been doing, so, so I use chat GPT mostly for my social media posts and I'm starting to realize what kinds of posts do well, don't do well. So I was already talking to a developer where I said, Hey, could you develop me a little app that some of the commands I keep having to give chat GPT, it just builds that into it. And so when I say Facebook post for blah, the other commands are like preloaded and they just, it knows. And he was like, yeah, we could totally build something so that for me, it would get to the point where my team can literally go to this tool and say, uh, procrastination. And it would output a tweet, a Facebook post, a LinkedIn post, a blog article, a this, and like they'd literally have everything they need. And I'm that, I'm, I see the potential for that. Well, I think books, what's going to happen is there's going to be a company that comes out that's like, we are the AI book writer. That's what we do. And so they're going to build all of these commands into it. So you'd be able to go in and say, here's a paragraph about my target market. I want to write a book for them. Hit go and out pops the book. I, it's We're a year max away, six months before a company comes out and offers this. I guarantee it. Um, so marketing books will just become literally the process of clicking a button. The book that you sent me to review is designed pretty nicely too. There was like a PDF design and everything. Did you do that yourself or did you end up using some tool to do that? No, I just did that. Okay. But I've but that's what I gave away with what I've got with my thing is a template to do that. So okay. when I give it to you, they'll get that template. Got it. Amazing. Um, so now what are you changing in your systems and processes with your clients? Or is this becoming something like you get a client that comes to you and says, you know, help me build my brand. Is this like top of line for you? Like how are you injecting this into your business and into your clients' businesses? Well, because I'm doing mainly teach going more towards the coaching and training side now, um, it's going to be one of my biggest things that I'm going to be teaching them to do as part of their brand. Make yourself mm. a book, whether it's a 20-page book or a 200-page book. Basically solidify your offer and what your business is about by doing a book. Not only can you tell people that it gives you a bit more, it gives you pretty well instant credibility. Um, mm. It's a good marketing tool. It makes you know your business because as much as the AI writes it, you've got to then go and confirm that the AI is writing what you want to you believe in, because mm. otherwise it's not a decent book anymore for your marketing, is it? So you know you're going to go in there and say, oh, okay, you've said that bananas are green. Well, I know they're yellow. They're only green when they're right. They're not right. So you're going to edit the book that way. Mm. So that's what I'm going to be doing is showing them how they can use a book to know their business and market their business and also have some credibility wow, and also amazing. confidence. Let's face it. You write a book, you feel a lot more confident than you did with two days before when you did have a book. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, I, I think it's something that people will not understand the value of until they just do it. Um, yeah. 
they they really just won't understand the value of it. I'm I'm sitting here. I'm already thinking. So Tina, there's like multiple funnels that we're working on in the company, and I still have because the the marketing books I'm doing now are targeting existing entrepreneurs who are already in business, and so I don't. I tend to. I intended to make that uh, the process of writing that a little closer to the legacy one because I don't want to just churn out stuff that's too cookie cutter. I have very specific strategies. I want them to learn those. And I'm just, but we're, we are trying to create a lot more resources for the expert community. I want you and I to connect outside of this podcast. I'm just curious how we could use AI to create like a really cool advanced Facebook ads guide, right? Or YouTube ads guide. Um, and cause I'm, I'm thinking like if I'm attracting people to the expert summit brand, like there's a book that I have that says, Hey, here's like, you know, 15, 15 ways to increase the performance from your Facebook ads. If you're a coach or a course seller, that's going to help me attract the right demographic. It's, it's, uh, but if, but if I have to write each of these, it's, it's going to take forever versus if we knew that there's a way to use AI to just create this and it can be done in a week or in two, three days. Um, I have a lot more funnels I can build really quickly. And then the best part is just drive a little bit of traffic to each of them and keep building the community. Um, the book that I'm currently writing right now is 17. It's, 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 it's called 17 laws of scale. So it's just 17 different rules I've learned about scaling an information business. You know, I don't know. They're very specific. So I'm not sure if that's something I would lean on AI for, but, but there are other topics. There have to be other topics. For example, creating a powerful offer, how to create a powerful coaching offer. I, you know, I'm wondering if AI couldn't help me write that book. Um, and if that couldn't be a fun book that I hold in my hands and have a $300 a, a day budget in ads. And so then like, if you join the Facebook support, if you join the Facebook group for Expert Summit, it's like all these resources you have, like all these really cool books and guides. It sounds fun and it sounds like something they can do. And I know from a visual perspective, um, people, in case you're wondering, you can like use Canva. Canva's got some really cool stuff now where you can just go create the design work in Canva. So, yep, so. all might have done that. I I have a set of templates of probably 15, 20 template book covers that I just use and they're, yeah. they're easy enough to adjust. So I could just keep using them over and over again. Nobody would ever know. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Fascinating stuff. So everyone, um, I cannot implore you enough to focus on building your brand, whatever it is, pick that is. And, and I have found that the who you're serving is probably the biggest determinant. And Tina backed me up on that. Um, and then write a book. Get, get your book together. It's not that hard. Not now. Now the excuses are being ripped from within you. Um, and if Tina can help you in any way, Tina, how can people reach out, follow you, stalk you, figure out how to find, you know, find ways to give you money? Yeah. Okay. I have those. Um, my website's just tinafletcher.com. So you can find right. me there. Great. Um, we're going to pin it in the comments at the bottom on our YouTube. If you're watching, make sure you hit subscribe. Like, like and send this episode to your grandmother and everybody else you know so we can spread the message. Um, if you're on any of our audio platforms, then go over to onicpodcast.com. We'll have it in the show notes, uh, tinafletcher.com. Uh, you heard it live. I'm going to be asking her to help us. I want to do some work with her. Um, actually, Tina, my director of content is literally here. He's traveled to the Learn Center today. He's in the other room over there. And um, I'm going to go straight to him and say, hey, we need to learn this because he write, he manually writes all my books. He'll kick and scream a little bit because he's a traditional writer, but <laughs> um, but I think he'll he'll appreciate this a lot. To the rest, see AI will never replace him because he's yeah. professional and he's good. All AI yeah. ideas is a tool for him to make it quicker. Yeah, no, absolutely, I agree. All right, fascinating stuff, everyone. TinaFletcher.com, and thank you for listening, everyone, to the Onyx and All Show. Make sure you help. Get it out to the world. Listen, if you haven't left us a review on the audio platforms, please do on YouTube, The Onyx Singal Show, the brand new YouTube channel. Make sure you go follow it. Um, and on our social media, you're going to start seeing me post a lot more actively. So make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. I don't know, all the places. All right, everybody. And as I always say, when life pushes you, stand straight, smile, push it the heck back. Tina, thank you so much for your time. And to the rest of you, love you. See you soon. Bye.